Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that track. Um, like I say, I found myself uh, quite skilled recently at finding these hidden little gems, and this is a very unremarkable looking uh, looking track uh, from the first investigation. But then uh, when I listened to it, I was very, very impressed with uh, how how good quality and how uh, how how mainstream. I don't want to say that word, but how uh, how professional it sounded. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. As I said at the beginning of the show, we have another track at the very end, um, which will be a new new one which we haven't played before. So I hope you stick with us to to listen to that. So on to the discussion points um, for today's uh, show. Now this this one's quite a a unique topic to talk about. We recently we covered quite a lot of uh, copyright subjects, and uh, I know there was some concern between myself and Roy that we're moving away from some of the more traditional topics that we like to cover and looking at a lot of copyright. But I think it's fair to say that copyright's been in the news pretty much uh, all the time recently. What with uh, ACS law and um, Sony's actions, uh, and we've we've had a copyright theme to a lot of news stories recently, especially in the tech world. So it was very interesting that uh, I saw an article on the excellent Torrent Freak in regards to the film called The Tunnel. Now, people might not know uh, what The Tunnel is. The Tunnel basically is a um, a film made by enthusiasts, amateur filmmakers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and it's filmed in the real-life underground networks in Sydney, Australia, which I believe were used during the Second World War. Um, it's a horror movie, and the way it was funded was quite unique. It asked for donations from members of the public and uh, interested people, and they could buy a couple of seconds of footage or a couple of frames, and that idea was we're going to sell the movie that way, um, people actually owning a, a frame of the film, and that's how they were going to fund the project. Um, all well and good. Uh, it worked very well, and I think they I think they raised a considerable amount of money to help with the project. But the main ethos of it was we're going to distribute it for free, um, and one of the intentions was over the BitTorrent protocol, um, which is quite uh, controversial of late, depending on who you speak with. If you were to speak with Hollywood, you'd probably get a response that it's a, a haven of pirates. And if you speak with any other computer user who's got more of a rational mind, the BitTorrent protocol is. Uh, fantastic uh, means to transfer files. That doesn't mean copyright uh, infringement or allegations of it. It can be Linux distributions, it can be uh, your own material, whatever. Now, for a long time I've been uh, speaking about the, the current model that we have uh, for selling media. Um, I don't think it's much of a mystery now that the current model that we have, DVDs in shops, is not what the consumer wants. And I think there's no surprise that when we see a rise in inverted commas piracy, the modern day consumer uh, wants a different type of model for receiving uh, their material uh, to consume the films, the music, the whatever. Um, so this was one of the films that sort of touched on this new method of deploying a, a movie. And um, recently, according to Torrent Freak, it's now been supported by Paramount, um, Paramount Pictures. They're going to be producing the DVD for the BitTorrent version. The DVD is going to be sold in the shops in the traditional way. Um, and it's going to have a few extras for people who actually buy the, the title. Now, the reason why I call this show um, You Can't Please Everybody, because certainly I and many people I've noticed commenting on the Torrent Freak site have always mentioned about this new new business model and how companies need to jump onto the bandwagon now before they get left behind. I think iTunes sh shows that the market is there for people to get their material in a different way to what was traditional tw uh, 10, 20 years ago. So now that we have Paramount supporting this, it seems to have been hit with mixed opinion. Um, there's been a massive backlash of uh, users who have now seemed to boycott the project on the grounds that an evil corporation, in inverted commas, um, have got involved in this uh, in this project and now doing what a lot of people have been asking to do for many many years. So really, Roy, this was um, something that was it would be nice if we'd had Gordon here to do it. But just really for your views and your opinions on uh, on Paramount getting involved and uh, what you think of the business model of that's currently in existence and how you think that the uh, copyright issue can be resolved in the future. And now I'll put you on the spot. I'm not sure it's an issue of copyrights, to be honest. I think it's more of an issue of primarily of distribution and means of production and sponsoring things in terms of business models. Uh, there is the uh, part of it that's to do with copyrights. If you share it for free and you say it's in... Uh, and I have to ask you, though, is Paramount going to have copyrights of the, of the film? Or can they right. limit the distribution of that? 
this this isn't 100 percent clear, and it's actually one of the questions that was brought up by uh, one of the many readers of Torrent Freak. Um, there seems to be a big question mark. I think one of the questions somebody asked was, well, if we can download the movie for free and the one that's available in the shops you buy and you get the extras, what happens if you if you share the uh, the one that's uh, that's been sold in the shops? Yeah. Um, the, problem is, the, the problem is not is not copyright. So don't have much of an issue with trademarks either in certain circumstances, but. It's the question of how you use the copyrights. People say copyrights, but copyright is just something you have when you implement something. Uh, it's yours, or it's kind of like perceived to be yours because you wrote this, and you can say, well, I wrote this stuff. Uh, but how you limit or how you use your monopoly, that's a different uh, type of thing. So if, you're, if you write free software, you also have copyrights. The question is, what do you do with them? Do you assign them to somebody else? Do you say, well, you can just get everything you want from this thing? Or do you use the copyrights in the GPL sense to say, well, if you use my copyrights, you have to share your changes as well? Uh, so if they, if they retain copyrights and people who sponsor the films uh, enjoy the fact that they produced or helped produce it, it's something that allows them to share uh, the, the output. That's that's reasonably okay. I think the problem Mike have here is that they want to antagonize it to be kind of anti-cultural, in the sense that they want to go against those companies which have always traditionally abused their copyrights to uh, to limit the distribution, to elevate prices, to create a sort of a, a price fixing situation where all the films have to have a fixed price uh, for a fixed number of views and and so on and so forth. So they view that as a company exploiting their effort, which was funded by them, to challenge those very same companies. Uh, if, so again, I, I don't think it's uh, it's so much of an issue for copyrights in general. It's it's the questions of how uh, how they use the copyrights and how they distribute the stuff. Uh, in, in the case, I mean, you have to remember. Just just one last point is. In the free software world and in the proprietary software world, in both worlds we use copyrights. In both worlds, people who write the software, they say, well, this is my implementation of things. Otherwise, it's public domain. You just throw it out there and everybody just takes whichever pieces of code they want and just don't give a damn what they do with it. Uh, but the fact is that the free software, the free software community encourages the sharing of the code. They just spread it around, you know, modify it and just comply with the license. And the other group basically said, well, you have to pay us for a license for each copy which is made of that, and you can never really make a copy of, the, of not even the binaries. You're not even allowed to view the source code in many cases. It's our copyrights, they'll say, and this is our secret code, and you're not supposed to ever take it outside the company unless we package it as a binary file. So, I mean, I, th- I, think, I think the thing that concerned me when I was reading a, lo- a lot of these comments, and this isn't unique to Torrent Freak, there's been uh, numerous comments made over uh, quite a few of the forums that I read, and we've worked, well, people have not campaigned, but spoken out very loudly about the benefits of BitTorrent, the uh, benefits of file sharing, and I worry with the current, with the new generation that's coming to into the computing world, and they're using BitTorrent and understanding how machines work and how to file share, um, there's this big sort of image of a evil company in inverted commas that um, can't be involved in any way in this new business model and I see Paramount getting a lot of flack in respect of this you know, jumping on board and fund, yeah. helping fund this movie which they I think one, is a shame um, No, I, I actually agree with some of these people uh, you probably know enough about ACS law because you've been writing about it and you you can think of the front groups like uh, RAA and MPAA and uh, all these groups whose purpose is basically to harass people, to scare people, to terrorize people, and to also sustain the old business models. So it doesn't mean they do the right thing. They try to ensure the status quo stays as it used to be. They try to be anti-progressive uh, and, and try to work against any kind of reform, even if it's a very rational one. Uh, and these, co- these, these, the companies that fund those fund groups, of course, th- these are not companies. You know, MPAA is not a company. It's just a front group working on behalf of companies like Sony and, and perhaps...